Good afternoon, everyone. I, th I think we are at almost full strength that we're going to be, since I know there are several folks who couldn't make it today, including um, Craig and Joyce and Julie and Tom and Bob Dobler are unable to be here. So other than that, I think everybody is here or has an alternate here. So thanks for being here. Meeting nine is scheduled to be the last meeting, which is quite an accomplishment. So <laughs> thanks for... Uh, being here on time, and we, the mayor's probably going to join us around 3:45. And and if we're if we're not if we're still deliberating on stuff, he'll be standing by. Um, but we'll he'll be speaking to us later today after we hopefully sign off on the task force report with any final edits and talk about the sort of communications rollout plan from here, how we want to get the word out to the greater community about the recommendations that you have made. So let's see, let's just go around the table for quick introductions. I'm Karen Reed, the facilitator. Hi, uh, David Hall, City of Everett. Deborah Wright, City of Everett. <clears throat> Marilyn Rosenberg, business owner, Cafe Zippy. Flora Diaz, associate attorney at Olone Nunn Law Group. Georgia D. McLeod, Council of Neighborhoods. Mark Nysether, Sea Dog Corporation. Mark Manti, the Everett Clinic. Renee Quistorf, business owner, Renee's. Matthew Savage, Journey Church. Jonathan Upwan, the Salvation Army. Craig Scott Dahl. <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh, actually, this is his seat, but uh, he's not here, so it's Ed Peterson, Housing Hope. <laughs> Cassie Franklin, Cocoon House. Megan Dunn, Human Needs Commission. Glenn Bachman, GM, Everett Mall, Port Commissioner. Jim Upton, Evergreen Manor. Uh, Reese Volunteers of America. Ken Stark, Snohomish County Human Services. Helen Doorway, the Presbyterian Church of Everett. Chris Adams, the Adams and Duncan Law Firm. Sylvia Anderson, Everett Gospel Mission. Great, thank you all. So again, today we're gonna just do the usual preliminary approval of the meeting minutes from the last time, take a look at the last final draft of the task force report and then talk about outreach and then have a closing discussion with the mayor and give you all a chance to say your last words for the good of the order should you have any to contribute. So, uh, co-chairs, do you have anything you wanted to share with the gang today? I'll probably save mine for the, the end. Okay. We have a summation. A summation. I'm very excited to hear it, okay. <laughs> All righty, that takes us down to the approval of the meeting eight summary minutes. Have anyone had an opportunity to take a look at those or see any concerns, errors, omissions? And if not, I would ask for maybe a motion to approve. I have a change. You have a change? I'm sorry, Megan, I didn't notice. Go ahead. Um, so I was not present. So on the first page where it says task force attending, it was Tina Ellison. Thanks. Is there anything else? I would move that we approve the minutes as presented with that edit. Thank you, Cassie. And a second. Thank you, Georgia D. Any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? All righty. Thank you. We'll call those approved. And now to the final draft task force report. And I uh, have a couple things. So the attachments, A, B, and C, are actually in front of the report. Uh, and then you see the report, the body of the report. The la behind the body of the report, there is a uh, two-sentence minority statement from Alan Dorway and Megan Dunn regarding the panhandling ordinance item. And then behind that is a revised Exhibit D, which is the ballot. And the, the only changes to the ballot have been to move, I think there were four items that we decided if, if you were going to make a recommendation as a priority, it should be reflected as a consensus item on the ballot. So there have been four notes to that effect in, in the final ballot at attachment D. So I have um, two things that I know I need to chat with you about in the body of the report. Um, let me just ask if, if by show of hands, who has a comment that they want a, a, a concern or a proposed edit to this report that we just need to be planning for today? Anyone? Bob? Okay. Anyone else? 
see I, uh, anything. I have one request from Julie Zarn and I and Alan Dorway kindly pointed out a, an error that I made. I dropped a, a recommendation completely inadvertently and didn't notice it. I want to make sure it gets back in. So if it's okay, let me just speak briefly to the executive summary, uh, which is attempt in one page and a quarter to encapsulate the whole process, the mission, uh, the number, the, the challenge that we were asked to address, speak about that a little bit, and then identify the number of strategies you have. And then at the back of that, at the end, you'll see the table, which is the priority recommendations that you uh, uh, voted on at our last meeting. And these are marked in the report and in this table here with this star icon. And I think there are 16 or so of those. They, they appear in slightly different format in the report itself, but that's the way you wanted to consolidate them in the discussion last week. So, with, and I would just notice I'm, I'm going to be taking out the numbers at the tail end of those in this table in the executive summary because someone just reading the executive summary, those numbers won't mean anything to him. But in the body of the report where we talk about what the numbers have something to do with, those, the numbers in the will stay in the body of the report, but they will come out of the executive summary. Um, Karen? Yes. It says 16 uh, on um, the bottom, last paragraph, page one. I think there are 17. If I understand what you you're are right. counting. I will make that change, thank you, and then I'll learn to count. What's the one that was forgotten? The one that was forgotten is in the body of the, of the report. It has to do with providing restrooms. It's under strategy 2.2. .2. Um, it was item 27, and when I went to change the number, which was an error, I, apparently I managed to delete the whole thing and not notice, so that's brilliant. Um, it was the one about exploring options for expanded public restroom access and reduce the negative impacts from street populations on the library, transit center, and commercial core areas, map the restrooms where street populations are welcome, and provide signage downtown to direct people to these facilities, explore the feasibility of urban rest stops and public restroom solutions. So that, that was endorsed without, um, that was an 80% recommendation and it was just totally my error to, to remove it. I did not mean to do that. I will stick it back in as it was in the prior draft because there were no comments on it. And thank you, Alan, for pointing that out. Um, that was the one, one change. And then I had a, a request from Julie Zarn in the challenge statement section where we are talking about, so it's like on page four, when we're talking about institutional challenges and we made a change to the first bullet to add reference to, so it's on page four under institutional challenges, emergency medical services, hospital and human services. She suggested that we stick in the words mental health after human services. So if, if folks would, are okay with that, I, I sort of thought that it was included in human services, but if, it, if it's helpful to clarify and add mental health, I'm, I'm perfectly fine with that suggestion. Alan? Sorry, we're on your top first. I'm, I'm, okay, sorry. Yeah, so the, if, do folks, I don't know if anybody wants to make a motion to add, that cha the, add those words at Julie's request, but I told her I would bring this forward to the group. Karen, can you clarify which page you're on? Page four under the ch uh, section institutional challenges. The first bullet, you'll see some redlining there we talked about last time to add reference to EMS and hospitals. And she's suggesting adding mental health to that uh, before the reference to human services systems. Oh, before, okay. Before, yeah. I, I'd support that, so I'd make that motion. Okay. Thank you, Flora. Is there any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Okay, I'll add the words mental health there in addition to sticking rec recommendation 27 back in the report under strategy 2.2. <coughs> and those, and making the change from 16 to 17 on the first page of the executive summary. So that's all I have. So now Alan and then I th Bob, go ahead, Alan. On, uh, excuse me, on page 14, 
uh, under 3.1. Uh, oh, right. 47 should be 31, and that and is not be. a starred item. Right. Sorry. Yes, that is correct. Um, you talked to me about that before, and I was so focused on the other two things. That star icon likes to reappear magically, and it should not be there. Um, it should just be a regular bullet point on page 14, uh, the first bullet under strategy 3.1, and the reference, we added a new item, uh, and it's the actual number it ended up with is 31. So thank you, Alan, for that. Those are just corrections. Is there anything else in the report? Um, Cassie. I guess I just have a question in the, and it's more in the formatting. So the, the summary section lists, you know, recommendations, and then when they're detailed out, they go into, it's almost like the, the verbiage changes a little bit. And so it's, um, this, this bulleted list is like, um, one of the things when, I, when I'm reading through it doesn't appear to be on there is, is outreach, but then when you go into the detail, outreach is. And so it just, I don't know if there's some way to make that clearer, and I'm trying to find the page, I'm sorry. Um, so on page, um, I just saw it. I think it's 2.4, um, expand outreach services to, to homeless youth and adults. So it's on page 11, but it's, not listed in that summary section um, on pay, on the uh, double I or I don't know how you say the first three pages of the report. Right. Executive summary. I've, Executive summary. That may be one of those bulleting problems that I think it's a bullet problem that is uh, not. That is a bullet. Should be a bullet, not a star. I think you're right. So let me just, okay. It should be a bullet. As I said, the, my computer would just, I had to change back these bullets about seven times because once I started using a star, I kept trying to use a star. I thought I caught them all. Mm -hmm. If I look back at the minutes from last time, I don't see 24 as one of the priority items. So, right. so, that, so, so anything, that's, anything that's a bullet is not a recommendation. It's just a strategy that we talked about. And then no. the start... No, the so. stars are the priority recommendation. Yes. And then everything else in here is either a consensus recommendation or a 60% recommendation. Mm -hmm. So we decided that we wanted to forward all of our consensus recommendations and all of our 60% level recommendations and that we wanted to then, in addition, identify a subset of priority recommendations. So the priorities should be listed only for with the star icons. Okay. But all the other things are still in the report. And I so so there was some inconsistency with the starring and the yes, those two. The last item that Alan meant yeah. mentioned and the one you just mentioned. And I'll go back and double check it once more because only the priority items that you identify should be should have a star icon next to them. Any other? That's the only thing I do wrong. I'm sorry for those errors. I'm hoping they're not anymore, and I'll go take one more swipe through this before we print. But um, anything else that folks saw? Just on page three, there's okay. another reference to 16 rather than 17. Oh, page, page three. It's bold. Okay, got it. Thank you. And Mark. Hi, Seth. Um, just following up on Casey's question, um, on page nine, uh, under policy goals, it says the task force endorses prioritizing support for services for children under 18, then young adults, and then older population. I'm not sure I understood your answer to her. Was the starred bullet points, does that not include that recommendation? for services to the younger population, or does it? That's a recommended <coughs> policy goal in, in the document. That's where we, where we put it. Okay, even though the statement here specifically says the, tax, the task force endorses prioritizing, so. Right. So. so I, 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 
So I just uh, to try to sort of consolidate it. I tried to take some of the most general types of recommendations and put on, under this section in particular, which was the longest one, make sure the verbiage was included, but I gathered a handful of them into the policy goal statement because they, they were high level policy types as opposed to sort of specific tactics Right, so or what actions. you're saying though is the high level priority does not include serving youth or children are that particular sentence was not identified as one of the 17 priority recommendations at the last meeting. Okay. And, and the outreach is about youth and adult outreach too, so it's not just around youth. Yes. That, which is not a priority, but it's a recommendation. Yes. Anything else? So with those corrections, sorry, sorry, go ahead, Mark. Kind of picky, Uni, but um, okay. we refer to commercial core areas throughout the report. Sometimes it's plural and sometimes it's singular. And I'd rather it be plural. I will do a search and destroy. Okay. Search and add And I'm Go ahead. I'm sorry if I missed it, but is it clear in the report too what is what we're defining as those commercial core areas? I know we've discussed it, but when we're using this report um, and sharing it beyond, it would probably be good to again define it because it was a question I was uh, posed today and I didn't have the answer at the tip of my tongue. I'm not sure I have an answer at the tip of my tongue either. Dave Koenig gave us some suggestions. Um, we may want to try to add a footnote that says the way based on the city's current, <laughs> I see him there, yes, in the back. Um, we could get a, Dave, if you, can you, would you be willing to hum up a few bars on how you would define the commercial core areas again for folks? It's been a while since we saw your great presentation. And then I would um, take, if you can give me two sentences, I will drop a footnote to, to define those in uh, the first section of the report. Would that, will that work? Would you, does, can you come on up to the uh, microphone somewhere and, and just speak a little bit to that again? <laughs> yeah, no t nothing like a random request, okay. So that we all have the answer to that question in case we don't read the footnote. Well, the core, The core areas that uh, I talked about was downtown, but also then Evergreen Way, Broadway, and um, uh, were the main areas. So, so. Downtown, Evergreen, Evergreen Way, Way, and, and Broadway. Broadway. Mm -hmm. Everett and Everett Mall? Mallway. Everett Mallway also. Oh. Evergreen Way and Broadway. Okay. Does that include the Everett Station area? <laughs> uh, yeah, I would consider that part of the downtown area. But, good. but for clarification, it would be good to add that. Including uh, the Everett Transit Center mm -hmm. area. Okay. Okay, so we'll put a footnote there, uh, probably on the first page of the report under the introduction we first used that term. That's a good suggestion. Thank you, Cassie. Okay. Karen? I just want to make sure Evergreen Way would include the 41st intersection because it becomes rucker then and I don't know how it all yes Dave's not yes okay great okay good good clarifications thanks everybody anything else to clarify this is the last call so um, it's going to go out with these changes and your name on it at some point so very soon so I want to make sure that you're comfortable Sorry. So, um, if with those changes, and I can run through all of them again if you would like one last time, the, the handful of changes I'm going to make to this report, uh, if people need, would you like me to do that once more? Or are you guys good? You're good? Okay. Then I would ask for a motion to approve the report with the amendments we've talked about today. I move. I second. Thank you. Uh, any further discussion? It's a big deal. <laughs> it's a big deal. <laughs> any further discussion? All right. Um, all in favor? Well, let's say a show of hands. 
One, two, three, four, five. We've got two people. So there's like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen in favor and two opposed. I'm catch uh, all, all those opposed. I was gonna. Is there an abstain as well? There's an abstain as well. I'll yeah. Abstain. You want to abstain? Do you want to oppose or abstain? I. <laughs> and do you I want to vote? I mean, it doesn't really matter. Vote yes or no. Um, I just my biggest concerns is that some of the we just have even with the 17 highlighted priorities from the last meeting. I just think that this report is a little overwieldy. And that doesn't mean that there are not good nuggets and good hard work from many people around in this report. It's just a big concern of mine. That there's too much in the report. That there is too much in the report. Okay. So do you want to be on record as an abstain or an oppose then? <laughs> God. Sorry. I need to like time, take time to pray and sort my life out. <laughs> <laughs> you, can, you can put me as a yes, but my, my hesitation is the fact that I, I mean, because I'm not against the substance of what's in here. Mm -hmm. I think that the report, like I said, is just, is, as some, one of the comments pointed out in our purple lavender things, is that, yeah, you know, this is another attempt to peel back a really tough onion. And I agree. And, and as such, there are unfortunately a lot of layers and a lot of uh, things that as a community we really need to work for and strive for. But I think to come up and say as a task force um, that we're all so excited that we came up with, you know, 60 items, yeah, yeah that's, that's great. But that's 60 that are very complex and and I think I don't you know my, my thing is at 60 we'll put this on the back burner somewhere and in five years you know some of our people who come after us will go hey look at let's dig this item up and read it again and oh my goodness wow look at where we once were in 2014 and um, so that's just my concern. Mm -hmm. Well, Alan, I, I would have a concern if that happened to this report as well. I mean, I think that's why I encourage you guys to have the implementation committee and come back and hear from them. And they're going to come back in March. And there will be some of the things they tell you in March, we're not doing these right now because we can't. But we can do these other ones. And that you guys asked to be coming back then every six months thereafter for the following two years. And I, I think that's a pretty good step towards making sure this doesn't just get put off in the back. Yeah, well, I, do I expect that all 60, you know, I, I think it will be a challenge certainly to do everything in this report in the next two years. I don't think that's not what the recommendations even expect because some of them are longer term. So, but I, I hear the concern. Does anybody want to speak to that, Ed? Yeah, I'm glad Alan brought that up because I, I do think that the report's value is in, in really in the implementation plan. It's a, it's a roadmap, it's got a lot of key elements, but some are short-term, some are long-term, some are uh, more viable uh, um, without a lot of money, and some require a little bit of money, and some require a lot, some are longer-term initiatives that we, if we know what we wanna do, we can organize to get there uh, over time. So the implementation plan is really the critical part. We've created a roadmap, but without an action plan. We have action items, but not necessarily the plan for how they get deployed. That's true. Um, anyone else want to speak to? I think that the that is the vote. So it's 17 in favor, one abstaining, no opposed, um, and I think four absent. And I just have a question too, yeah, since we were just referencing implementation plan in this. Um, I don't. How, how are we referring to the committee? The um, you want to call yourselves? You don't have a committee yet, but what do you want to call them? Team. Implementation team, and so sure. yeah, sure. My my question is is how are, are will we be deciding in this meeting, or uh, how we're going to move forward, and who will be a part of that work? And um, well, as you know, the mayor asked me to head that up. Uh, we'll have some discussions internally and see what staff report, staff support will will have for that, and then uh, reach out to uh, some 
folks in different sectors. You know, I think we committed to have somebody from the business sure. uh, community and, and, and several other folks. So um, uh, uh, you, you have a chance to say no. <laughs> sure. Uh, I, I know everyone's put an awful lot of time into this already, but, but we will be looking for uh, help from a, a workable number of folks from this group. Okay. And you'll let folks know when that group is, and keep them up to date yeah, on we'll, how they're we'll, moving we'll, ahead? We'll keep you uh, up to date on, on uh, our meeting schedule, and then of course we'll be back in March. Okay, so I think, unless there's anything else on, on the report itself, there is a one-page document and at this point, I can't remember where it went in your packets. Oh, the minority, I, I, I apologize. There is, the minority statement is also attached to the report. If you didn't see it, that will be added. That is, it's a minority statement from Alan and Megan. We talked about it last time. They gave me some language of, around it and it will, be, it will be added as a footnote in their strategy 1.1. The text of that is in the back there if you had some if you wanted to take a special note of that. Um, okay. So the communications rollout plan is I think the next thing we need to talk talk about. I don't know if folks can find this in their packets. Do you know where it is? Yeah, just behind them. Okay, so it's just a page and front and back. And what this is is to try to identify, uh, we, we went over this with the co-chairs, we tried to identify some of the main messages that the co-chairs would want to be referring to as they did some of the presentations about your work, and then uh, suggest some of the audiences that they would like to meet with in the next couple of months to share your findings and recommendations with them. So we've identified uh, those recommendations in the table at the bottom and we could add some more to that if people think there are some that are missing. So I'll just um, give folks a, we, I think I sent this out yesterday or Wednesday. Uh, if folks want to take a look at and offer any, if they have any concerns about something missing or that you'd like to be see tweaked in the way we approach the messaging, let, let us know. This is a good chance to chat about that. Is that a question or thought? Paragraph. Bob? Paragraph 5 also has the 16 versus 17. That's where I saw it first. And it talks there about, uh, and it has earlier about uh, mm -hmm. uh, identified 16, 17 strategies. Then down below, we start with strategies again in this table. You might consider mm -hmm. making that, uh, that heading communication strategies just so somebody isn't confusing this as a list of. Good, things. good idea. Okay, thank you for that. And I think then the words also mental health, uh, per Julie's recommendation earlier, can go in item five there. Um, that there's the, the laundry list of folks that need to be coordinated. Any other thoughts about this list of messages, things that you want to make sure we, that the, the co-chairs and you emphasize when you talk about this report to folks out in the community? Yeah. It, uh, I didn't get the chance to review this before uh, now, and I'm just glancing through it now. I don't see any reference to our interest in making sure that the needs of the street population the, as a value in the work that we've done is emphasized in our communication plan. I think it was the, we could change that. I was the tail end of item two, the last sentence is, and the well-being of those living on the streets. I, I wanted to try to capture that idea, and that, that, that's where I attempted to do it. Okay. Okay. Um, any other? Uh, you, you mentioned adding mental health into uh, that paragraph five, and although it fits in the executive, in the, in the summary document you're talking about, it doesn't fit in the, in the this, five. It, it doesn't fit there because this is not just mental health human service providers, it is other providers, so I would, Okay. recommend it not being in this communication. I'm fine with that. Okay. Good suggestion. Megan? Yeah. Um, you've got the um, city council mm -hmm. presentation and then the press release. So can the press release go out before the city council presentation so there's Where's opportunity the for citizen input? So there's city council on number one and then mm -hmm. number four is Everett Herald with a press release. And it just says November. Mm -hmm. But I don't know if that timing would work. Um, I don't know. Is Megan here today? 
Uh, do you guys have a press release that's going to go out before? I, I, Megan, Megan is certainly working on that, but typically what we would do is um, include notice in the agenda um, up that the presentation will occur at the council meeting, and then the paper will um, uh, run a press release after, it's, after the presentation, after the report has been presented to the council. Um, uh, so that typically would come a couple days after, the day after that. What would come beforehand would be a notice in the agenda. Getting into the editorial board may take a little bit longer. But um, along uh, Megan's point, I mean, is it possible that there could be a press release that says that we have completed our work and prepared this document and a presentation in the future will go to the, uh, at such and such a date, will go to the city council? Um, sure. I, I, I don't want to speak for Megan, but uh, I'll, I'll, we'll certainly work with her and do whatever the expert things should be done to best communicate this to the public. In, in advance of the Wednesday I mean, you, council. you, Megan, were trying to make sure that, it, that there was an mm -hmm. announcement of, that there was going to be a city council meeting <coughs> on this. Is that? Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah that, that makes sense. I'll suggest that to Megan Pembroke, our communications director. Good point. Okay, any other suggestions? Are there groups that you would like to See, Ed, sorry, is that your card up is not a thing. Okay, Mark? I was just going to make the comment that I think a critical communication element that's missing is, is um, part of the paragraph that we have in our report on implementation. So the fact that David's been appointed to, to lead this and, um, you know, because what's, okay. what I was left with trying to read it with fresh eyes was, okay, so what happens next? Okay, that's a good, that's a good catch. Okay, so we'll put in something at point 11 about the implementation work moving ahead and reporting back. Sounds good. Okay. okay. I think that's a, a really good comment. And one of the things Sylvia and I have been talking about is not only the issues on this list, but how we communicate the process that we've undertaken as a group, the 27 hours. and, and if we all just sat here and looked at our recommendations, it's hard to say that they're good recommendations unless you have actually gone through the readings and the presentations and the tours that we have. And so I think it's part of what Sylvia and I need to communicate. So any comments you have on those two, we'd certainly appreciate. And I, I think you're exactly right, you know, talking about that, that full step and what the next steps are. It's a big piece of that. So. Other suggestions? Cassie. Um, Around the presentation to the Partnership to End Homelessness yeah. Board, I'm wondering if we can include the Homeless Policy Task Force and just do that in, in one shot, that presentation. Item combined. seven? Yeah, so item seven, if we presented to the Partnership to End Homeless Board and the Homeless Policy Task Force at the same time, I think Great. that we're going to have a lot of the same people or uh, representatives from similar organizations there that might be good, and, and it just might require a larger space, but I think it would be beneficial to the chairs to only have to do that once. Great. And That's I think it. the Homeless Policy Task Force would really like to hear it directly, too. Perfect. Okay. Good suggestion. If there's no concerns about that, we'll just add that in there. Anybody else think that there's a group that is not on this list? Ed. Yeah, I'm looking for other cities, and uh, I know we have Snohomish County tomorrow that convenes cities. Some There used to be an association of cities and towns that met periodically. Uh, there's... Um, there's a group that is an interjurisdictional initiative to address affordable housing mm -hmm. that has eight or nine or ten of our cities in the county participating in it, and I would think they would have an interest in this. So I think, uh, given you know one of our strategies is to mm -hmm. help other communities know what this work has been done and participate in it, that some effort to reach out to one or more of those groups that uh, have the ears of leaders in the other cities. So you want me to put that down as sort of forums that would include participation from multiple cities around the county? Or this interjurisdictional committee to address affordable housing? I, I, I'm not sure I'm catching the names of both of those groups you mentioned. Yeah, there, I don't know whether the Association of Cities and Towns still exists and meets or not. We were talking about that because that was our suggestion. We were not clear about that, so. If it exists, mm -hmm. a presentation should be made. And this jurisdictional, interjurisdictional uh, organization, and you could 
get that from the county. Um, uh, Do you know what, what the name of the group is, Ken? The Affordable Housing Alliance? Oh, it's the Alliance for Housing Affordability. Close enough. <laughs> wonderful acronym of AHA. Uh -huh. and, and how many cities are participating in that? I, it's 12 to 15. I don't remember the exact number. So I think yeah, that would be an excellent forum. So that's two groups we'll add, uh, the Association of Cities and Towns in Snohomish County, if it still exists, and the Alliance for Housing Affordability. Cassie. And when we present to the Everett Rotary, will the other, other Rotary Clubs that are also in Everett, South Everett, Mukilteo, as well as Port Gardner, be included in that? And what we, kind can, of uh, we had talked or? about that. We were trying to focus on, on the one downtown so that we didn't kill our co-chairs, but, yeah, but I think we can make a note to try to make sure them. the other ones are invited. Yeah. We're okay with the long list, but so combined. it may take us a few months to get to all of them, but we're okay. <laughs> There's enough These there guys to keep are busy saints. for the next 10 years. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Other rotaries. Okay, these are good ads. Anything else? Alan? Well, I think it would be remiss without having a faith community uh, presentation in which I think uh, Matthew and I, well, I can't speak for Matthew, but I we would try to put together. Okay. Um, is, it, is there a name of a, is there like a council now or we, should we just say faith community to be convened by the two of you? There's probably unofficially, unofficially there's a network of pastors that gather on a regular basis in Everett, so we okay. could put something together. Okay, thank you. We'll reach out to the other faith communities not represented there and we can plan something. And, and you both are willing to take that one on to try to pull those guys together and get us a date? That would be great. I am. I, I won't speak for Matthew, but I will. I'll help you out. Okay. Thank you, gentlemen. <laughs> okay, that's good. Good ad. Anything else? We're down to, I think that's 15 now. One more out there. Sorry, no, no. Sophia, what you got? So I was mulling over number three, and it really um, doesn't set the tone for me. It feels more of a blame. We've identified the issue of having lack, lack of housing and social service funding, and when we identify the symptom as homelessness and mental health, addiction and poverty, it feels blaming to me instead of identifying the issues that we came up with. Well, we had a motion at the last meeting to put that in bold faith. That statement, I think it's got to be, I think the word poverty has got to come to the move to the front end of that. Poverty, homelessness, mental illness, and addiction. I think they have to run alongside the issue then, right? Lack of housing, homelessness, mental health, lack of social service or mental health services. For me, identifying them alone mm -hmm. feels like we're blaming this community. Okay. So now, Ed, you were the one that had made the motion that we definitely put that sentence in bold face in our challenge section. So maybe I should just stop there and see what your thoughts are. Kathy and I are trying to figure out where we are. Where are we? Well, I think she, I, I believe Sophia has gone back to the first page, key message number three, which was a sentence that you agreed should be placed in bold font um, in your last meeting. And that sentence appears... on page three of the report under the challenge section. So I'm, I'm, if, if there's an additional sentence to add which would make it make more sense in this particular context. I'm sorry, everyone's looking confused. I was looking at the communication rollout or just how right. we're communicating this information. Okay. Right. So you, you had, so you're raising a concern I, about yes. that number three which we I is am. in the report as a bold-faced okay. statement. Yes. So, I guess I, 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 I'm gonna respectfully disagree because I, be, be, be saying it's, um, when it says they're, they're in part, but not entirely a symptom of homelessness. And so, to, I, I don't hear the blame, but I understand where you're coming from, that, that it, that it may be heard as that, but to me, a symptom of homelessness is, it's, it, I, don't see, I don't see the same thing, so I'm not as concerned with it. 
Sylvia? So Bob. I had an issue with this um, statement um, earlier in the document. I really believe these are issues of poverty, not issues of mental health. And so out of poverty, I mean. Poverty was gonna end up first on this list instead of last. poverty's first, it's yeah. about poverty, yeah. and then people are experiencing yeah. mental health issues, addiction, housing, right. in the context of poverty, and so that takes the blame away and adds yeah. it to the issue about poverty. So I if we, that. And if that we change, poverty yeah. first, does that, that help? Yes. That yes. change is yes. in the body of the report. It's my mistake not to have car carried okay. it over to here, so. Okay, with that change, that one's a little bit better, easier? Yeah. Okay, yeah. great. Bob. And the bowling was intended to make that stand out. That This happened to be a section where if you didn't highlight something like that, it did seem like there was a lot of blame being developed in there, and you could jump over this sentence and not see that there was something behind why those conditions showed up on the street. Thank you. Okay, Ken. I guess we're kind of nitpicking a lot of stuff and, and I understand why and so I'll just go ahead and nitpick one too. Um, <laughs> the report. And it's, the report has been signed off on. It, it's, it's on number three as well and, and I, personally I don't have the way, uh, I don't have a concern about the way it's written but I do understand how it could be read differently then maybe I'm reading it. What I don't agree with is that um, mental illness and addiction are a symptom of poverty. They're not. The rate of mental illness and the rate of addictions among people with money is pretty high as well. So I, I do believe that issues related to homelessness are tied to poverty. Um, but the poverty isn't necessarily something they started out with. Um, many times there are individuals who have a mental illness that lose their job and lose everything and res the result is, the symptom is, poverty. Um, but poverty in and of itself doesn't drive mental illness or addictions. So can I go ahead and I speak to that? So what I, was, what I was trying to say was that if I have money and I have a mental health issue, I don't necessarily impact my neighbor. I'm not necessarily sitting in front of your business. But if I don't have money and I have a mental health issue, then it's very obvious it becomes a community issue. So that was my point, not that it stemmed from that. So Thank clarification? You. Clarification. Thank okay. you. Okay. Okay. Flora. Sure. So on the same, the same topic, I guess to the extent that there's treatment available for mental illness and treatment available for addiction, it does become more of a street level social issue for people who are suffering from poverty. Because if they're impoverished and they have mental illness, they might not be able to go to a doctor and have coverage and get treatment. Versus if they have poverty, then it's more likely to be a street level social issue. So I guess that's why I think it still is part of poverty. Many roads to Rome. OK. <laughs> uh, anything else on this document which i will will finalize and it's not going to be part of your report it'll just be part of our informal roadmap for the to-do list that we'll be working on megan um you can update number nine the everett human services needs it's, it should be the everett um, human needs committee i think yeah um the timing okay. would be january that's when we'll meet again great thanks any, if, if anybody knows when uh, the groups in item seven or eight are most likely to next meet, let us know. Do you know, Ken? In a few minutes, yes. In a few minutes, okay. He's looking it up. All right, perfect, thank you. Okay, anything else on, uh, Marilyn? Okay. Um, I just thought one thing for future planning and when we um, address more of this is to look at other cities and communities and look at what's really working, you know, because I, I don't think we did enough comparison with that and also the whole ad addressing low income poverty and I felt like things were thinking about it as um, segregating when I think to really build community, we need to have it be a part of the community, like have housing be all levels of income inclusive into that to really create change so people that are low income can see good and um, other values to create their change too. I think some of that will come, that kind of idea comes out in, I think it was the recommendation that Ed made around the sort of the welcoming community idea mm -hmm. and how everybody gets engaged in understanding 
the, the issue and helping to be a part of the solution. Um, a good point. Ed, did you have something? Seeing you touch that mm -hmm. table card, I'm, I'm paying attention. It just occurred to me, we, um, the Housing Consortium of Everett and Snohomish County has an annual housing conference, and there may be an uh, opportunity to feature this at that conference if, if uh, Mark Smith and the organization could be asked to consider that. It might be a way to build broader engagement and awareness of this important work. The Housing Consortium of Snohomish County. That's Everett and Snohomish County. I'm Mark Smith. Hey, Mark. <laughs> Thank you. We'll put that at on the conference, list. right? Okay. When it, would you know what month your annual conference is? June. June. Got it. Anything else? I think this is a lot of stuff, so I'll just say thank you in advance to our co-chairs. Don't, don't shake your head quite look so sadly. Still be, there you go. Okay. Um, <laughs> if you add one more thing to this list. Yes. <laughs> okay, you're not adding something to this list. No. Okay, okay, good. Okay. That makes more sense to me. All right. So with that, I think we are, unless there's any, anything else on that, I would like to go ahead and... Uh, take up the next item, which is the follow-up actions by the task force as a group. And this is picking up on Bob's idea that there might be, uh, it might be a good idea to, for you guys to convene as a group to do something in the community. And I, I don't know if you had thought about that more, Bob, but you want to just recap your idea for the community? No, I would just emphasize uh, that we would do two things. And on maybe on both sides of these issues. Uh, one is that we might spend some time uh, maybe around Thanksgiving here, like a Wednesday night. Um, I think there's a feeding programs Wednesday night as opposed to uh, in one of the churches uh, that we might consider uh, serving or assisting in or maybe something uh, over that weekend. And that as a group, we might also uh, do something that uh, supports cleaning up the city, whether it be uh, breaking up in small groups and just taking a set of streets and walking those streets ourselves and, and uh, uh, doing some uh, cleanup programs or some specific things that perhaps uh, business owners might identify ahead of time of where uh, some work is needed. But something where we could show that we did more than just come here and meet and come up with ideas that we physically all decided to go out and specifically do something ourselves that could be part of the communications plan. But not just on one, not just on, on dealing with the issues that, that are causing problems on the street, but also showing our compassion for those who are, uh, for one reason or another, uh, living there. What do folks think about this? Um, I would recommend, I think it's a great idea, and I would recommend that maybe we have a volunteer for each project that is willing to lead and then coordinate with the group. So if if there is a person who wanted to, to lead a, a cleanup of, in the dairy area of downtown that would um, kind of support local businesses, we could, you know, we would need somebody that set, would direct traffic, I guess. And so that person might need the expertise of, as Bob said, of, of where, and then maybe um, one of the meal providers could say, yes, I can set a date and then, because I think if, I am happy to follow. If someone tells me where to go, I will show up. Um, and so if, I don't know if Alan or, or, or if, 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 if we have a, a date that we could just join and, and serve or if there's a, a, a particular corner, I'm looking for someone to say, I'll do it. Matthew. November 29th, we offer a Thanksgiving meal for the city. Everyone is invited. And if there are members of this task force that would like to serve with us, there are uh, we, we will have dozens and dozens of people from our church congregants that will be serving. If any of you would like to join us, we'd be happy to have you. We uh, will be distributing about 100 coats, toiletries, uh, scriptures, a meal, and other services and supplies that we have to give away. So um, if you can pour coffee, if you can greet somebody kindly, if you can open a door or serve food, we would be delighted to have you. I would ask uh, to perhaps email me ahead of time to let me know, and uh, we will save you a spot on, in, in an area that you're comfortable serving. Matthew, do you know um, two things? Do you know about the time on the 29th? Yes. Uh, the, the doors will open at 5 p.m. 
and uh, we will serve from 5 to 7 p.m. And would you uh, be able to sort of like do an email to everybody? I'd like be taking happy to. from the, one of the ones that I've sent out to the gang just to sure. reply all, say just a reminder if you're interested and yeah. to make sure folks let you know that if, they, if, you got, if you plan to come. I'd be happy to, sure. That would be great. So that would be one leader. Excellent idea, Cassie. Um, we need one more person maybe. Wendy said, Wendy McClure from the City uh, Office of Neighborhood said she would be willing to work with uh, coordinating the cleanup issue if she might need some folks to coordinate with downtown. But if uh, she can try to come up with an idea around that and maybe reach out to you on that, unless someone else would like to take that one up. Maybe, Bob, do you want to work with, with Wendy on that? Okay, Bob and Wendy. So they'll do an email to you all where there's just an invitation to participate in something if you are interested. Thank you. Excellent. Thank you, Bob. Thanks, everybody. So watch for more emails. That never happens, right? Okay, more emails. Um, I think that gets us through item six, and that gets us down to uh, hearing from Mayor Stephenson. And I'd like, he's in the back room, I'd like to invite him to come up and uh, just observe. I, uh, he has been great about observing some of your meetings here. He's been staying close in attention to the report. And I think it took a lot of uh, political courage to actually convene a group like this when you didn't know what they were gonna come up with for recommendations. So thank you, Mayor, very much for being here today and for speaking to the group. <laughs> 